all love to receive an encouraging note from a friend. And on one page of the New Testament, we find a very personal letter from Paul to Philemon. This brief note to a friend is full of doctrinal truth and practical help for us all. Open your Bible and your heart today as we come to the book of Philemon. Let's join Scott Pauley now as we study God's Word together. Way back in the Old Testament, Solomon wrote in the book of Ecclesiastes that whatever the Lord does, He does forever. You know, men's work oftentimes is temporary. It's, it's short-term. Uh, something's accomplished, and then it decays, it breaks, it, it ends. But when God does a work, it is a forever work. It is an eternal work because God is the eternal God. So I would ask you if that's true, when God does his work of grace in someone's life, what are the effects of that? And the answer to that is the effects are eternal. We return to this beautiful note written from Paul to his friend Philemon. And, of course, at the heart and soul of it is the work God is doing in the life of their mutual friend now, Onesimus, this man who ran away from Philemon, who did Philemon wrong, but now has met Paul and through Paul has met the Lord Jesus Christ. And what a change. What a change has come. We learned in verse 10 that this slave became a son. In verse 11, that the unprofitable man became profitable. In verses 12 through 14, that the runaway became a received one. And now we come to verse 15. And it's an interesting verse. It's easy to just read it and slide by and miss it. But listen to verse 15. For perhaps he therefore departed for a season that thou shouldest receive him forever. Now remember that this story of redemption and reconciliation, this story of, of forgiveness and restoration in Onesimus' life is a picture of the grace of God at work in all of us and the spiritual work that God does when we come to faith in Jesus Christ. So let's, let's add this to our list today in verse 15. And because of the love of God, uh, the one that was lost, the one that had departed for a season, is now saved forever. In fact, notice the time words in verse 15. He said he departed for a season. There are seasons in life, aren't there? Uh, I must tell you that there are seasons in life that we enjoy more than others. And as I look back on my life, the seasons that I have the greatest regret over are the seasons when I had departed, the seasons when I was out of fellowship with God. The most miserable person on earth is the person out of fellowship with God. And especially the person who has been in fellowship with God at some point, but they've departed. Uh, they're away from the Lord. And uh, for a season, uh, this man Onesimus had departed from Philemon, had lived in this rebellion. And of course, his deeper need was that he didn't know Christ. He needed God. He needed grace. But listen to how it changes. At the end of the verse, that thou shouldest receive him and we've heard those two words already back in verse 12, so we know he's been received, but receive him for how long? Receive him forever. <laughs> forever? Yes. Does that just mean that Onesimus is going to work for Philemon now for the rest of his life? Well, perhaps, but there's a greater implication here because in the larger context of this text, in the setting of the story, uh, Paul and Philemon are both believers, members of the family of God, and Paul is acknowledging that Onesimus has now come into that family. He has now been born again and made part of what God is doing in this world. And I love this word, forever. God's work of grace is a forever work. The word here, forever, literally means eternally. Eternally. You see, when you come into a relationship with God, you also come into a relationship with all of God's children. Uh, this is a forever family we're a part of because we have a forever father. Oh, by the way, did you know that there's a great family reunion being planned at the Father's house? I hope you're planning to be there. All of God's children soon will be together at the Father's house. Jesus is preparing uh, that place for us right now. That's what he said in John chapter number 14. And so when a person comes to faith in Christ, when they come into a relationship with the Heavenly Father, when they come into the family of God, that is a forever work. That's why the Bible refers to it as everlasting life, literally to the vanishing point. 
There's no end to it. That's why the Bible calls it eternal life. The nature of God's salvation is that it is a eternal work. It is the eternal gift of God. I had to work through this in my own mind as a young man. Uh, this whole matter of everlasting life. And once a person comes to Christ, uh, what if he still fails? For example, let me ask you about Onesimus. Do you think when he returned to Philemon's house, he was a perfect man? I'll answer that for you. Absolutely not, because there are no perfect people. Even saved people are not perfect people. We all still sin. We all fall short of the glory of God. We hurt one another. Uh, Perhaps there was even another occasion where Onesimus offended Philemon in some way, uh, but there was a basic change that had taken place, and it is this. Onesimus now belonged to Christ, and Christ belonged to him, and nothing and no one can change that. When God saves a man, he saves him forever. You see, it's not based on what Onesimus does forever. It is based on what Christ does forever, and I remind you again, Solomon's word, whatever God does, it shall be forever. The Lord Jesus talked about this in many places, but in John chapter 10, he said this, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me and I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My father, which gave them me is greater than all and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. So we know the Lord Jesus and the Father are one, but he gives an amazing truth here, and it is this. When we come into a relationship with him, when we believe on Christ, we become one with them. We come into that forever family. We are united with God through Jesus Christ. And did you hear it? Jesus said, I give unto them eternal life. And we will what? Never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my Father's hand. That's a lot of superlatives. That's, that's a lot of assurance. That's not the promise of some man. That's the promise of the God-man to us. So I would say this. If God gave you eternal life, guess what? It's eternal. If it wasn't eternal, he would have called it something else. When he says never perish, he means never perish. And when he says no man is able to pluck you out of his hand, He means it, friend. You are in the hand of Christ, and Christ is in the hand of the Father. And friend, nothing and no one will penetrate that. And so maybe the devil is using your old sins like a club to beat you over the head today. That's what he does. He's the accuser of the brethren. Stop listening to the liar. That's in your past. No, now, present tense, you have eternal life. And how long will it last? It will last Forever. Do you see how the nature of the relationship changed because of the work of grace God had done in the life of Onesimus? I'd like to encourage you to do a couple things today. First of all, rejoice. If you know Christ and have had your sins forgiven, then rejoice. Get your eyes off yourself. Stop being so morbidly introspective and concentrating on your regrets and sins and failures, what you should have done, and instead Think much on what Christ has done. Spurgeon said, Great thoughts of my sin lead me to despair, but great thoughts of Jesus guide me into the haven of peace. I like that. You want to you wanna come into the haven of peace today? Think much on Jesus Christ and what he's done in your life in his forever salvation. And then, don't just rejoice in it. Relay it to someone else. Share the good news today. In a world where so many have been rejected, tell them how they can be received. In a world where everything is temporal, tell them what they can have forever. It's found through the grace of Jesus Christ. Thank you for listening. This inspired letter has so much truth for each of us. Ask the Lord to help you live in the grace of God and share it with someone else today. Perhaps you could even write a note to a friend and encourage them to keep following Jesus. Visit enjoyingthejourney.org for many more resources and invite someone else to join you as we study together. Until next time, may God richly bless you.